we have the first speaker for today, that is Dr. Padri, so who's going to be talking about resilient team mindset for agility. So I uh, welcome Dr. Badri for the session. Okay, good. Thank you. So uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this session. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Badri Srinivasan. So uh, let me give a brief introduction about uh, myself. I have more than 20 plus years experience, and uh, I have been uh, working with multiple organizations in different areas from uh, development to testing to uh, the agile space and other areas. And currently, I am as an agile coach at the enterprise level and focused on transforming teams and organizations on the agile journey. This is a quick background about myself. And today, I'll be focusing on a resilient team mindset for agility. The theme for the two day virtual session also was team mindset for agility. So uh, I'll be focusing on how a resilient team mindset would help agility. So quick uh, agenda of what I'll be discussing today. Start off with the definition for uh, what's a resilient team mindset and agility, the reasons for agile adoption, and what are the criteria that drives success and agility for a resilient team mindset, and examples of resilient team mindset. A very brief case study of what I had implemented, and resilient team mindset challenges and strategy to avoid for the future. So I have a few slides, but I'll be talking more on how these things have been done. So let's come to the basic fundamentals, the definition for resilient team mindset uh, for agility. So what is mindset? We already have had a list of speakers in the last day of the conference talk about mindset and other things. So just to rephrase that, a set of attitudes held by someone is mindset. That's an individual mindset. But here we are looking at team mindset, which brings a lot of dimensions that is different from an individual mindset. So as a team, what is the set of attitudes prevalent among the team? That's what is team mindset. And when we add one more factor to that called resilience. So what is resilience? So a person or animal, anybody able to withstand or recover quickly from difficult conditions, able to recoil or spring back into shape after stretching or being compressed. So resilience is a property of an object or a person to bounce back. So the ability to bounce back, that's called resilience. So an example could be if you take rubber, when we compress it and leave it, it comes back to its original form. So that is resilience. And what is agility? Ability to move quickly and easily and think and understand quickly. So when we link all this, it becomes resilient team mindset for agility. And this is a very important characteristic or trait for teams. So now just to give a quick context background behind this, why should we look at a team mindset for agility? So if you look at the software development in IT organizations, software development is a team cooperative game. It's not an individual endeavor. Whenever we develop software, it's a team which develops it. And teams are better able to do as compared to individuals. Research studies have shown. So what are the key characteristics for a team which will enable the team to have a good uh, output and successful delivery to the customer? So one of the key things is we already talk about agile mindset, lean mindset, so many other types of mindsets. But all of them are encompassed within the broad framework of a resilient team mindset. So when we say resilient team mindset, the team should have the ability to withstand various stressors, pressures from all sides and still keep competing. And that's very critical. So a typical example we can see right now itself is the COVID-19 scenario. Because of COVID itself, we have gone into this virtual online way of doing things and so many other changes have taken place. This is uh, basically a black swan event, so which rarely happens and nobody can predict something like this. So it just happened and how do teams manage this and how can they go back and do things better? So that's one of the key things which we need to focus on this. And that's how, uh, given the VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world, we always have pressure, stress, tension, and other things affecting the team. And the team is always pressurized to do things and deliver. So unless the team has a resilient mindset, it's quite difficult for it to focus and move forward. So the reasons why we are doing Agile is, OK, that's also very clear. So most of the teams follow Agile. 
but uh, studies have shown that it's a better way to deliver software and faster, quicker, with good quality to the customer. So we have the standard uh, version one study every year, which is done, and it says that uh, currently now there are only about four percent of the teams which don't do agile. But other than that, in some form or other, uh, most of the organizations are adopting agile as their way of uh, developing software. And this is another reason why uh, agile adoption is needed. So we can see that we can accelerate software delivery. We can enhance ability to manage the priorities and increase productivity. These are some of the standard things which companies look forward to. And they have seen that Agile is one way of getting those things and it can be delivered better to the customer. So they have adopted Agile. This is a developer, Michael Zilka. I just found the quote very interesting. So I just put it here. Scrum is just the medium. The core is a team's mindset. So we have different types of agile development. One example is Scrum. We have Kanban and so many other things. So, but these are all the medium, the way we develop software. But the core is the team's mindset. The team's mindset is what is very critical for it to be successful. So now let's look at what's resilient team mindset. So looking at this, we can say that there are different ways of looking at it. So we engage with opportunity. We persist with challenges. And we quickly recover from setbacks, learn from failures to move forward, wiser and better. And finally, we become anti-fragile. That's a very interesting property. And we'll come to that shortly. And as a process during this, we look at alignment, structure, connection, direction, and finally, attitude. So the important thing that the team focuses on is how can we have a resilient mindset? So already the team is practicing a lot of things. and. They are focused on developing software and other things. On top of that, we have the Agile transformation journey. And uh, one fine day, the team gets uh, this thing that, OK, we need to do Agile also along with this. So it becomes very tough for the team. And how will they take it forward? That's pretty difficult. So having a resilient mindset ensures that they're able to engage with the opportunity and take it forward. So in this context, I'll bring two uh, key things here. One is. Uh, how did the team mindset come? So earlier when software was being developed, organizations were categorized into departments. We had the dev department, we had the testing department, we had different departments, and people from those departments worked together and they delivered software. So always the dev will do and they'll hand over to test, test will do and they'll hand over to prod and things like that. But given the changes in the market environment and a lot of other things, Organizations realized that this was delaying a lot of things due to handoffs and other things. So they decided to restructure the organization. And this was also necessitated because of a law called the Conway's law. Conway's law says organizations which develop and design software deliver. Uh, software sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt, Dr. Badri. Uh, you need to disable that particular below uh, banner which says meet.google.com is sharing your screen. Stop sharing. Hide. Yeah. Hide, hide. Just click on hide. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Rohit. I didn't see that. OK. So uh, Conway's law talks about uh, organizations which design and deliver software. They deliver software, which is a copy of their communication structure. So earlier when the software was delivered, it was delivered in different types of uh, packages. So the dev test prod like that, it would be delivered a disjointed way and then join together. So to change that, organizations restructured the organization completely, and they came up with the concept of teams. Earlier, you could call it as groups or divisions, and then together they joined to deliver software. Now, organizations have come up with the concept of teams. We have the concept of feature teams. We have component teams. We have ad hoc teams, different types of teams as compared to groups. And those teams deliver software. So earlier, it was the application mindset. So we deliver applications, the team probably, the person probably says. Now, teams deliver software. So people say, I belong to this team, and we deliver software. So the team delivers multiple applications. Earlier, we used to deliver applications. The focus was application-oriented. Now we became team-oriented. And that's how team mindset came. So based on the team mindset, how can we deliver software better? That was the next step. 
So the team began to focus on, okay, we need to collaborate, we need to do this and we'll deliver. So we had agile mindset, lean mindset and different types of mindsets. Well, that was good enough. We could deliver and we were doing it. But the question was, how do we improve it further? So after some time, team attrition happens, lots of people change, again, things change. So we have team model, the Tuckman model, which says forming, storming, norming, performing and agile. So teams grow, then they reach a stage and then they come down. But the team members stay, the team stays and team members change based on whatever reasons. So these are long-lived teams. So for long-lived teams to move forward, they need to have hope. They need to see that there is some things in the future and we do better together as a team, we can deliver better. And that's where resiliency comes into picture. We are focused on the team having hope, the team having resiliency that even if we have pressure, we have attrition, we have people changing, we have other stresses, we have issues due to the VUCA world, we have black swan events, whatever happens, team stays, we get together and they want to move forward. And that hope, that resiliency is what keeps the team successful and delivering better. So now what happens, as I talked about the rubber example earlier, if you look at rubber again, whenever we compress and release it, it comes back to its original shape. But if scientifically you want to see it, every time you do that, the original shape is displaced. There is a very small displacement and the rubber has lost its elasticity and it does not come back to its exact original shape. The shape keeps changing and it keeps getting into the different new shape which is getting compressed, by which it is getting compressed. So that is resilient. That's why we have the fifth property, very interesting property, become anti-fragile. We have a very interesting person, Nicholas Nassim Taleb, who talks about anti-fragility, has written multiple books, and one of the books is anti-fragile. So this means that whenever stresses are put on the team, team definitely bends. But like the rubber, it becomes stronger. This is a slight difference here. The stressors have impacted the team such that after the stressors are removed and the team gets back to a normal position, it's even more stronger than what it was before earlier. So anti-fragility is harnessing the stress to become stronger still. So we were discussing about uh, teams anti-fragility. So this is a difficult area, but anti-fragility means teams becoming stronger and how they can do better. So a typical example here is how do we do training upskilling for the team members and teams, uh, team members developing new skills and becoming stronger when the technology changes and they are next time a newer version or new type of technology, they're able to take it on in a better way. So those are examples of resilient team mindset. And that's how teams become anti-fragile. So this should be a focus for the future as we move towards a new UCA world where change is a constant and we keep doing things in a different way. So here I wanted to just give a quick brief case study example. So I was involved with coaching a team in the real estate domain. So the team was about eight to 10 people and uh, we had multiple uh, uh, people there. Uh, they were all doing waterfall and the organization decided to move to Agile and they shifted and uh, decided on finding, okay, we all need to look at becoming Agile. So how do we move forward? How do we take it up? So the team got formed and uh, they had an Agile master, Scrum master, and they had a manager and the leader, the de department leader who was there. So uh, during that coaching, what I had done was we had identified some engagement points, how we will engage the team to move forward to Agile and also focus on anchor points. Anchor points are people, people who are uh, highly ahead of the curve. So they are like innovation, focus on innovation, creativity, and the design and they are highly optimistic, positive, they have growth mindset, uh, all these type of things what we already see that. So those type of people are identified as anchor points. In this case, the anchor point for the team was the agile master, the leader. And most of the time it has to be top down. Bottom up is also fine, but the top down transformation is more effective and highly focused. So the leader was convinced about agile and the Agile master from another team was put into this team and he had already gone through the Agile journey. All the other members were waterfall and they had no idea about Agile. So the focus was on the team mindset. And how can we modify the team mindset so that they can do better? So we started with trainings and other things and slowly the team uh, began to change. But initially they didn't believe it and they thought we are very good in waterfall. Why should we move to Agile and 
uh, they were apprehensive, fear, all sorts of things were there. But the anchor points, the pillars, were the Agile master and the uh, leader. They convinced and they were able to take it forward. It took a journey of more than one year and over a period of time, they, they got transformed. And in the middle, the manager was there. He had full faith in the Agile master. So you need these, uh, some uh, important things, trust and an environment. So what I have put here on the slide, so team members willing to stand up to lead and drive initiatives and those who take consistent action. And we need to have a, an environment of psychological safety. So all these things can be tried out. So the manager provided that Agile master along with the coach, which was myself. We, well, I was a facilitator and the Agile master having some knowledge of Agile earlier because he had done. Together, the mindset was changed and slowly the team became more and more resilient. Over a period of time, the team's resiliency increased. And at some point in time, team was on its own and they could manage it. And that's very critical for implementing and sustaining an Agile transformation through resiliency and uh, focused on a resilient team mindset. And ultimately, whether anti fragility is arrived at or not, it's a different point. It takes a lot of time, but over a period of time, it happens. During this journey, some few people left, new persons joined, but the team was able to take it forward. So that's very critical. And all those things I've already put here. One of the other important things is do it right the first time. Generally, freshers and other people who join the team and some people who have been working for long, they don't focus on do it right the first time. This is very critical. The more you do it right the first time, lesser are your chances for defects and you are able to cut the defect at the first step itself. So down the line, the defects are reduced to a great extent. And this calls for a high level of discipline and focus so that you can do better. So these type of uh, mindsets need to be cultivated among the team members, apart from the lean agile mindset, which already uh, would be part of the uh, basic transformation. So when we focus on resiliency, we offer hope to the team members that yes, the pillars are there, we will help out. And when you lose hope, we can always help because we have seen the horizon. We have been there, done that. So we want to handhold you to take you to the next level, to cross the bridge to agile. And at many points in time, every day you experience failures, you experience loss of hope. And that's where we pitch in and try to help them as a coach, as a agile master, or as a leader or as a manager. And we see that the team goes forward to resiliency and that resiliency builds hope and we propagate success factors, uh, success stories at periodic intervals so that the morale is boosted and team is focused to deliver better. So these are some of the things we need to see how resilient team mindset drives success and agility. Okay, just a small aside here. So uh, just wanted to talk about something different, but which very beautifully demonstrates what is a resilient team mindset. So this is, green is the new black. So uh, how many of you know rugby? Okay, maybe some of you know, some of you play rugby and things like that. So the blacks, the all blacks were the New Zealand people, the Kiwis. They were very good in rugby and they have won the World Cup, the Ellis World Cup, uh, three times. And now another team, which is the South Africans, which are the Greens, they won the World Cup 2019. And they have already won the World Cup two times earlier, so totally they have also won three times. So now they are equal. Otherwise, it was considered that New Zealand, the Blacks were the best team in the World Cup. Now, after South Africa won the World Cup, they have the uniform green. So they have uh, become famous and now green is the new black. So greens are also now considered the best teams in the world. So if you see here that photos show about that. So the first one is they're all very famous iconic personalities. So Nelson Mandela, 1994, uh, appreciating and congratulating for that World Cup win. The person was François Pina. There was a very famous film called Invictus, if anybody would have seen that. So Invictus is Latin for undefeated, unconquerable. So that team won and this became a very famous film and it was nominated for the Academy Award also. The next one is, at the far, I'm talking from the bottom, anti-clockwise. Next one is uh, 2005, 2004-2005. Uh, so we had John Smith, again South Africa one, and the top picture, which is the latest one, 2019, uh, South Africa won the Ellis World Cup again, and it was a very beautiful thing. Uh, South Africa, if you know, was torn by racial apartheid, and at the time, Nelson Mandela was released from Robben Island, and 
from 1994 and later onwards, the apartheid was reduced to a great extent, but still is there in pockets. And uh, 2019, the captain of the South African team was a black who struggled to survive and manage a lot of things and ultimately uh, was holding the cup, which is a really great achievement from the mindset and resiliency perspective. He never lost hope and he, when he was there, he practiced for so many years and he thought one day I'll be holding the World Cup and he did that in 2019 and his name is Sia Kolesi. Sia Kolesi and next to him is Cyril Ramaphosa. He is the current Prime Minister of South Africa. So that's how a great uh, rags to riches uh, dream fairy tale happened. Purely based on a uh, resilient mindset and not giving up hope because um, a black managing a set of whites in Africa, South Africa especially is very difficult. And they have to change their mindset to accept the black as their leader and take him as a captain and do it. So, so much of uh, uh, demographics and other things happened before this thing happened. Otherwise, there could have been misunderstanding. They would have not listened to him and they would have missed the passes. They could have never won the match. So, at that high level, they did it shows the complete change in mindset and how the team was. Obviously, with the help of the coach who was a facilitator and helped them. Something similar happened in the case study and also in the in current organizations. We need to see how we can have the resilient mindset to change the team and have the team mindset to bring it to that level with the help of the coach and the other members who form part of the systemic environment, set up the systems for the team to survive. Unfortunately, given today's uh, pressure and so many other things and the cost and other things, uh, we are only focused on the short term and we don't look for the long term and we somehow try to see we have achieved it and we try to paper it over and prop it with a lot of messages saying we have done agile this and things like that. But ultimately after that, after the euphoria and having said we have achieved it, the team goes back to its old ways of working or it says agile is difficult, it doesn't work and so many other things. In order for all those challenges not to be there, we need to focus on this. So at this point, I just take a quick break. I'll show you a small clipping from that movie Invictus, which will tell you the depth of uh, performance that the two key people have done in that. That is mostly Morgan Freeman as uh, Nelson Mandela and Matt Damon as Francois Pina. Just a moment. What is your philosophy on leadership? How do you inspire your team to do their best? By example. I've always thought to lead by example, sir. But that is right. That is exactly right. But how to get them to be better than they think they can be? That is very difficult, I find. Inspiration, perhaps. How do we inspire ourselves to greatness? when nothing less will do. How do we inspire everyone around us? I sometimes think it is by using the work of others. On Robin Island, when things got very bad, I found inspiration in a poem, a poem, a Victorian poem. Just words, but they helped me to stand when all I wanted to do was to lie down. But you didn't come all this way to hear an old man talk about things that make no sense. Oh, please, Mr. Prison. It makes complete sense to me. On the day of a big match, say a test, in the bus on the way to the stadium, nobody talks. Ah, oh, yes. They're all preparing. Not. But when I think we're ready, I have the bus driver put on a song. Something I've chosen, one we all know. And we listen to the words together. And it helps. I remember when I was invited to the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. Everybody in the stadium greeted me with a song. At the time, the future, our future, seemed very bleak. But to hear that song in the voices of people from all over our planet made me proud to be South African. It inspired me to come home and do better. It allowed me to expect more of myself. May I ask, what was the song, sir? Well, it was in Wasisipilele, Africa, a very inspiring 
life song. Oh, I need inspiration, Francois. Because in order to build our nation, we must all exceed our own expectations. You can see here how the parallel is there with the organization. In order to build the organization, we need to exceed all the expectations. We need to have a resilient team mindset. We need to have hope. We need to have inspiration. And that is provided by various members in the systemic environment, the leader, the manager. And many times, Dr. Batri. Uh, so those are the things we need to focus on in order to have a resilient mindset. And based on that, this is the last slide. So we look at the team mindset challenges and strategy to avoid for the future. Many, many of the times, the team just needs a pat on the back and inspired talk from the uh, senior management, the leadership, and they feel better and they are having hope that they can do things. It's not that for the agile transformation, we have monetary rewards and other things only which work. Apart from that, these type of small things inspire and give hope to the team and they know that they can do better and deliver. So we need to focus on a resilient team mindset and see how we can propagate that among the teams in the organization and see that they are able to reach their ultimate goal of being anti-fragile and exceed all expectations and keep doing better and deliver for the benefit of the organization. And for that, we have some few uh, uh, things here which are listed. So make change real. So identify the behaviors, do the unexpected, live your values and hold fast onto the vision. When things are going tough, the people who have done it earlier, they provide the inspiration to the team and hope. So then teams bounce back based on resilience rather than just live on some ideals and keep uh, trying to do something. So this is how we show the path to the teams to have a resilient team mindset uh, through examples and uh, take it forward despite all the challenges and see that we can do our best. So with this, I come to the end of my talk. So if there are any questions, Please. Thank you, Dr. Badri. Uh, it was a great uh, session on resi resilient team mindset. So we have one question which has come from yeah, Anbu Joseph. He is asking, what is the definition of doing it right the first time itself? What if team fails? Okay, good question. So the definition of doing it right the first time, okay, that came from quality, Phil Crosby. So Crosby came up with that uh, uh, famous statement, do it right the first time, quality is free and things like that. So it means that uh, we are highly disciplined and we do it right from our perspective as per the standards or something. So if we need to write code, for example, we write code in the right way and we expect that the code follows ideal standards. We don't expect somebody else uh, to do another multiple reviews and check it out. Obviously, reviews will be there. But we take it upon ourselves, incumbent upon ourselves to write good code that the reviewer finds it difficult to find errors in our code. So that is doing it right the first time to the best extent of our knowledge. Something which we don't know, we can't do it right. And that's what we come up in the review and we learn. And from the mistakes, we don't make the same mistake twice. If we keep following this back and forth, these two steps, we'll, at a very high level, 90-95%, we continue to do, right, do it right the first time. Yeah, it's possible that... Each member do, does it right the first time, but still the team may not do it right. But that's a very rare state. And we also have the Agile Master and a lot of other people with experience. And a team is made up of multiple people with differing levels of experience. So they will always be there to help out. And in the backup, we also have the manager and the leaders supporting the team. So plus we have the buffer and we have the time horizon and all that. So we should have that psychological safety. The ability to fail and come up again and manage it accordingly within that deadline. So all those things need to be taken into account and very rarely that will happen with the team will fail. Team will automatically begin to develop a lot of confidence and that's where resiliency comes in. We have 1 plus 1 equal to 3. 1 plus 1 is not 2. So all the people working together at a holistic level, the team itself will be surprised that they are exceeding their expectations and resiliency will build in high performance teams. So it's but, but all these things Easy to say, not so easy to do. So to build these capabilities in members and individuals and all takes time. And if we are somehow able to do it, definitely the team will definitely succeed. And the failure rate will be pretty low. And if it fails, there will be people to help it and take it forward. There will be no specific blame game saying, 
okay you did it so this way you are responsible things like that it requires a lot of trust also okay thank you dr badri uh, i i think we are running out of time and the rest of the questions will be moved to offline yeah thank you yeah thank you right thank Thanks. you uh, so th it was it was a great session dr badri and uh, i hope uh, participants have got a great insight on it